What's up, everybody? This is PS for Build. I'm Chris. I am huddled up inside the Camaro because it is raining like hell outside. Everything's flooded. Driveway's flooded. Streets are flooded. But I'm nice and warm, and I'm staying out of the rain, so this feels good. Today, we are going to be working on installing a Grant steering wheel adapter and and some things that then we're going to put a steering wheel on the car, and then we're going to steer it. We have a Grant steering wheel hub adapter that is going to adapt from our old Camaro bolt pattern to a new, more modern steering wheel bolt pattern. And this is a six bolt, which happens to match up perfectly with our Sparco steering wheel that we just got. And we will be installing this sexy Sparco steering wheel in my 68 Camaro. Stay tuned. <laughs> Alright, so I should probably come clean. To be honest, I didn't look at any videos online to figure out how to do this, so I'm just gonna go through it. I watch a lot of videos online, but you know, the different levels of how broken down the cars are, since some of these are just so rusted out, some of them are just boring and some of them just don't apply. And plus, old people have old cars and they don't know how to film anything, so the camera's all flying around everywhere. Anyways, first step, take this piece off. <laughs> Easy. And then I bet we take a bunch of those bolts off and we'll get somewhere cool. Tell me, is this freedom, baby? Chasing after danger, making my heart raise. Whoa, maybe if the stars align, maybe if the world's collide, maybe on the dark side we could be together, be together, maybe in a million miles. Well, we've reached a really interesting spot here. I'm sorry about all the ambient rain noise, I can't help it, but uh, we, when we pulled this piece off, that comes off of there like that, and when we look in here what we can see is there's a spring that leads into a little cylinder right there, and that cylinder is surrounded by plastic and this controls the horn. So that spring stays compressed and then when this hits the ground, like this, the horn's going to honk. Okay. So that's how the old Chevy way did it. They ran that wire out into a grounding plate, which made sure it held ground, and it plugged into that right there. And then the steering wheel cap that I showed you earlier had a spring on it so it would keep it off of the car. You press it down, it grounds this wire, and the horn honks. Pretty ingenious little method for them to have that. Now, when you look at the new Sparco steering wheel, what you have on the back here is a bridged connection. So you press this button down, it does a, it bridges these two wires or these two terminals and it will honk the horn. So that's essentially bridging the inside of that with the outside of this wire. So we're the question is now, how are we gonna be able to do this on our, uh, apply this to our steering wheel? And one option is just don't run a horn or run the horn unplugged. And if you have road rage, that's probably a good idea. It's actually a really interesting thing to try. Uh, unplug your horn and drive around for a while. It can sometimes really help. But uh, I don't have road rage and I might wanna be able to honk at people. So I am going to develop a way for this to work. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna run this wire out through our black plate here and onto one of these terminals. This side, I'm going to permanently ground. I'm gonna go from a wire from this, and I'm gonna run that wire around one of these threaded screws inside my adapter. That threaded screw will then be grounded. When I press my horn button, it'll bridge these two connections, just like when I bridge it like this, and it'll honk the horn. So that's what I'm gonna do right now, and I'm gonna get the horn working with the adapter before I throw the whole steering wheel back on. Okay, with a little bit of fumbling and mumbling around, I was able to get this thing on here. So I got my three bowls, and this is the Grant bolt pattern. Three bowls going in here, 
our little wire coming out. The next, uh, and you'll notice I put a little bit of Loctite on there. Now, when I put my steering wheel over that, I will over this, I will not be able to see these bolts. Now, I'll be able to feel if they're getting loose, but I won't be able to see them. So I wanted to make sure that I put some Loctite on there so I have some level of security in the mental just knowing that this thing's not gonna just fall off at some moment and I'm gonna crash. So Loctite on these three bolts. Um, I use a medium Loctite so I can remove them again later, but that'll keep them on there for now. So next step, we're gonna do some electrical wiring up this to my horn idea. So one side of the horn's gonna go into this bolt, the other side goes to here. And when I depress the horn, it'll bridge the two, just like going like this, and then the horn will honk. Okay, so we modified that and we're able to pin it right in there and it's nice and snug and secure in there. Hammer down, we just test fit these back on the horn and if I press the horn nice and hard, I'm getting a honk. So now we're clear to go ahead and install the rest of the Sparco steering wheel, which is basically just putting the steering wheel on top of this six bolt, throwing the bolts in, throwing the horn in, plugging the horn in. And then the, the last thing that I need to make sure that I do is cover this. Well, I'm gonna cover these pieces with some electrical tape. I'm actually gonna do a layer of duct tape and then a layer of electrical tape to have two layers because this is gonna be pressing up against the back of this. And if that bridges these two things, then my horn's gonna start honking permanently until I can pull the steering wheel off and fix it. So make sure to cover these up with something to insulate them from this being a grounding mechanism. All right, well that was our Grant adapter install and on top of it, our steering wheel install. Uh, to go from an old car like this, an old Chevy or probably the other brands too, you need to use an adapter to get to a new modern steering wheel with a six bolt. And we went through it all and I showed you how to hack that horn to get it to work. Let me show you the end result here. We got our steering wheel, it looks great. Horn, works, it's on there, nice and sturdy. Couldn't be happier. So hopefully this episode will be lengthy enough. I don't know, I'm trying to make them a little bit longer, but uh, in case it's short, um, there will be another episode out really soon. Uh, I'm gonna try and get a car stereo in this thing. You see down here, I have an Android powered double DIN unit I'm gonna throw in this car. Um, I'm really excited to be testing that out and trying that out. Uh, and, and hopefully I can get that up in uh, relatively uh, quickly. Right now it happens to be Halloween, so I don't know if I want to put this episode out Halloween night or maybe Halloween morning so y'all will be all hungover and can tune in and watch it. I'm not really sure. This might be the hungover Halloween episode. We shall see. A um, couple notes that I had on this. I can't remember all of them. Oh, one of them. This is a steering wheel I have for another car. It is a personalized or personal, personal. Um, steering wheel. It's very much like the Sparkos, but it has this quick release hub. Now installing this might have actually been a lot easier with the quick release hub, although the install was super easy itself. But I wanted to say a couple things about quick release steering wheels. They're a pain in the ass. Uh, when I got my first car, it had one on there, and I understand people like them for racing and other things like that, but you have to take that steering wheel off everywhere you go or else someone's going to crack your windshield, pop your steering wheel off, and take your $500 steering wheel and head on down the road. So Say you're out on a date or you're doing something fun, some girl has never been in your car before, oh, oh my god, this is a really nice sports car. You park and then you have, oh, hang on, hang on, baby. Clink, clank, clink, rip your steering wheel off the front of the car. She's sitting there like, what the hell are you doing? And then you gotta go put it in the trunk, which is just as easy to break into. Or, worst case scenario, take it with you. Every time I get out of my car, I have to take the steering wheel out of the car and take it home with me. My coat rack holds a steering wheel. It's ridiculous. I went on purpose for this bolted on steering wheel one, I like the tactile feel of it and just and, and the way that it, you know, just knowing it's all bolted in there too is nice. Um, but yeah, I hate having to take a steering wheel on and off all the time. In the dark sometimes you go to turn the steering wheel to get it to lock in there. You accidentally hit the horn. You wake up the neighbors. It is really lame. Speaking of the horn, another thing, when if you're doing this at home, 
Tell your neighbors beforehand that you're going to be working on a car and working on your horn because I must have honked the horn like 35 times while I was doing this. And I'm sure they're wondering like, is somebody trapped in their car and honking their way out? Uh, anyways, that would be a good tip. Another thing is, is check your local laws. I know in some counties or some states, it is illegal to take a steering wheel that has a fully functioning airbag off of your car to replace it with one that does not have an airbag. I'm pretty positive that that is a true myth or a legend. Now this car is old as hell and has no functioning airbag, so that is okay. Um, thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you all for the comments. Thank you very, very much for the support on the channel. Uh, the channel is growing like wildfire and I'm really happy about that and I just couldn't be happier with what we're doing and you guys' support is just awesome. I got some fan art in yesterday and I gotta say that was really cool, some BS for Build fan art. So thank you very much for that. I came in from Colombia, which is pretty cool because I don't even speak that language. Um, <laughs> thank you guys very much for tuning in. Uh, if you want to know when the latest videos are out or you want BRZ updates, if you want any car updates, uh, follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash BS for build. Check us out on Instagram. I always post uh, on Instagram and Facebook when we got new episodes coming out. Instagram is hashtag BS for build. So I guess you can't really follow a hashtag, which is kind of a pain in the ass, but you can follow me and, you know, I post stuff. I like using the hashtag because I, I want everybody else to be able to share. So um, follow me on Instagram and I post on hashtag BS for build. Uh, follow us on YouTube and check us out at bsforbuild.com. We got some more stuff coming up on the website pretty soon. Thank you guys very much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and leave any comments if you have any questions about how this goes in the future. Thank you very much. Have a good day. And a happy Halloween. Ooh. What am I going to be for Halloween? I could be Chris from BS for Build. That's scary enough. Oh, I got a better one. I could be your mechanic. That's pretty scary. Or I could be your house cleaner that messes with your car. Or I could be your car cleaner. That's pretty scary. I could be an engineer. That'd be even scarier. What if I was a professional engineer and I built stuff like this? I, oh wait, I am a professional engineer. I could be a race car driver. Smoke. If I had black hair, I could be Marty from Mighty Car Mads. Did I just say Mighty Car Mads? I did. Mad! Oh, I could stay home and I could hand out car parts instead of candy. I could be a carpenter. I could be a scientist. I could be a firefighter. <laughs> I could be an independent filmmaker. Go fund me! I could be for build. Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Peace.